All right. Once again, I am Joe Stevens. And I am Tech Rat. With the Equestrian Inquirer and Everfree Radio, and we are at Everfree Northwest with a bronylicious guest. Ladies and gentlemen, bros, bronies and Pegasisters, Kathleen Westluck. Hello. It's nice to be here. Nice to meet you all. Now, we, I think everyone who is seeing this knows exactly who you are, but just for those maybe two people who don't, who do you play on the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic program? I play the voice of Spike the Dragon and Mayor Mayor and various incidentals, which we all do in the show as well. Yeah. Brolicious, brolicious. <laughs> so I, I, I got in trouble last time for saying wonderful too much, but I'm just overwhelmed with how wonderful it is that you're here with us at Everfree Northwest. And so thank you for allowing us to do this interview. So I guess our, our first, what we're trying to look at is when we see these great performances and these great uh, characters, what, what's it like in the studio when you have Andrea and Tabitha and all those people? Walk us through how the performances go. It's a little noisy, to be honest with you, <laughs> especially when uh, Rainbow Dash is there too and uh, and Andrea. It's fantastic being in the studio. We we are one big happy family, and every time we go to work, it doesn't feel like work at all. It feels like just a big you know, get together with fun and, and uh, the directors are fantastic. So it really isn't like going to work at all. And uh, when you do a show with a group of people after a period of time, it just becomes such a natural thing that you slip into your roles very, very quickly. So it's very, very easy. And we usually get our sessions done within three to three and a half hours as opposed to the four hour calls. Now, is a session a full 22 minute program? Is that what a session is? Uh, when we're talking about a session with respect to the actor's perspective, it's a four hour booking that we come in to do one episode of the show. So in that four hours, you will have recorded all the voices for that entire program? Uh, in the four hours, we will do one episode. Uh, and then we'll come back the following week and do another episode, and the following week and do another episode. So it's usually weekly. Yeah. And so, just looking back on season two, I guess if you have how you had one session per episode, and how much time did that take to to do? Um, well, I believe uh, you know for thirteen weeks it would be pretty much thirteen episodes. So. So it was every week, one, one day? Uh, yeah, I think there are times, it's hard for me to remember because we do other shows as well, and um, sometimes uh, there are glitches in the schedules, whether it be for the director or the clients or you know, even sometimes the actors. Uh, so we have to sort of go with the flow. Sometimes it isn't exactly weekly. Sometimes it's every two weeks, or they might change the day. Uh, but on average, it's about every week that we do a session. We do recording, yeah. And there's a little bit of music in the background, if, if you, can, you can pick that up. They're actually rehearsing the concert that's going to be going on. Yes. So, um, oh, and you just completely sidetracked me by bringing that up. Thank you so much, Joe. <laughs> um, oh, no, what, what I was going to ask, because uh, you were saying that um, you'll get into these four-hour sessions. Um, when you do these four-hour sessions, are all of the actors involved in the show always at these sessions or are there times that um, maybe you have to fill in for somebody else who isn't there at the time? Um, how does that usually go? Uh, in my case, because I am Spike and uh, Tara uh, Twilight Sparkle happens to be in Los Angeles, um, it's a trick for both of us because we both are in most of the shows, all of the, I'm in all of the shows with uh, Twilight Sparkle usually, so uh, I'm recording my own lines. Um, without Tara there, and she's recording hers without me there. So what happens is one of the other actors will read the Twilight Sparkle lines uh, so that we can sort of get into the role. And uh, we ha I have to imagine Tara there. I have to sort of, in, in a way, hear her voice. And now that I know her personally and I also know um, the show, then it's easy for me to get into the role a little bit more. But there's always an actor, whether it's uh, Tabitha or, or Andrea or, or um, Ashley, We'll jump in and say, do you want to read, you know, Twilight's lines? And then we'll do that. And, and sometimes when Spike's not speaking as well, I'll, I'll read it for other people. But we're, it's myself and Tara are always uh, recording in a way without each other. So we have to do a lot of that visualizing. Yeah. Now, Spike has come a long way in, yes, since yeah. season one. He's growing up a bit. <laughs> Just a bit, though. Real slow. Just, he, he grew up <laughs> quite a bit. That was a bit yeah. of a bad thing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But he's gotten better. He, we've we've seen a lot of character progression with Spike. What's it been like? Have have you adjusted who Spike is voice wise with his character development as he's developing as he's growing? Absolutely. I mean, it's so exciting for us to see how our characters do evolve because uh, every single episode things change and there are new situations for our characters to be in. And for me to have Spike, uh, especially my favorite episode was. Uh, Owl's well that ends well, of course, without <laughs> Owlicious. I mean, I, that was oh. just too cute for its own good. But anyway, um, because I got a chance to show 
the deeper Spike, not just him being the assistant, not just him, you know, having these little quips now and then. Um, but he got really, really upset about, you know, sort of being rejected here, or he, he thought he was. He had an evil side. He, he pulled the whole snidely whiplash thing going on there. Well, you know, that's what happens when you get too hurt, I guess, right? You lash out. <laughs> At least he did. I, I could have sworn you would have gone with Dragon Quest uh, as, as your favorite one. So you, you preferred that one other than... Well, you know, uh, they all provide some different kind of challenge for me. Dragon Quest as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the dog and pony show as well, when he was uh, trying to defend Rarity, was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. And then he had the flashback or whatever. And, you know, so... And when, when he grew up into be the bigger dragon, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, then I had to, with my voice, go as low as I could for a certain period of time. So, so when, yeah, when, when Spike's say, voice yeah. changed, when that he was, did that the was really... still you the whole time throughout that it, episode? It, it was me for probably th three quarters of the time. And then the last little bit, they had they had to alter it and, and put some echo behind it and lower it a little bit at the end. But I had to go, um, Spike's talking like that. That is so awesome, right? But then he goes here, and then he goes here, and then he goes deeper, and he goes down here. Mm -hmm. And so he's yeah. like, that, hey, that is so awesome. And that's about as low as I can get without faking it. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl comes in and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, actually, speaking of that, because because it is interesting, you know, because Spike is a male character and, you know, you're a female voice actress. Um, are there any challenges in voicing a male character? As, as a female actress. That might be different from saying voicing Mare Mare, for example. Uh, well, you know, when I do a boy voice, it is more challenging, generally speaking, just because of the placement of where it is, because you have to uh, hold it and sustain it in that placement. And every boy voice that I do or young man voice that I do requires that, and the director has to help you with that. So um, it may seem... Um, like an easy thing to do in some cases when if I have to sing or I have to do this or that, but people don't realize that I'm having to hold it and then I'm having to be natural while I'm holding it. And so there is a challenge to that, but it's a lot of fun. And when I do the different varieties of boy voices, from, you go up here, that is so awesome, yeah, that is so cool, you guys. Or I sort of talk like this, uh, sort of, uh, this was a Chiaotzu in a Dragon Ball uh, show we did a long time ago. Uh, or you can get the uh, chubbier boy, um, I don't know, you guys, like, that was so cool. Are you going to eat that? You know, like, <laughs> you know, be a bigger boy. So uh, and it, I, you have to be it physically to stay at it. And I can imagine that as challenging as that is, it must be even more challenging when you have to sustain that voice while you're singing as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, yes, it's true. It's true. Because, and the other thing about that is, is I'm basically I'm an alto. And so a lot of the other ponies are, are sopranos or people who sing for them. So to try to stay up into that range and hold it uh, mm -hmm. and hit the notes and stay in tune as him. Yeah. It takes a little bit of work, yeah. I have to, I, I, I pray to Daniel, uh, Ingram that is, the, the, that, that the, um, at least in this little bit we did, I was hoping it would be in the right range, and it was. So that's a good segue into, we, we want to talk a little bit about the song. That's, in, now, we, there's not a lot that we can talk about with season three, obviously, but there is something that was released at Comic-Con that Spike has a full song. So tell us a little bit about that. After doing two full seasons, you finally get to sing. Oh, no, she wasn't. <laughs> um, actually, it wasn't a full song for Spike. It was uh, Twilight singing um, uh, the song, and uh, Spike came in and did these little sort of bits of repetition. And some ballet, and, I believe, as well. And he did some ballet. That was amazing. <laughs> Okay. It was incredible because uh, I didn't see the animation myself, uh, but uh, it's wonderful what they do with the animation because then it just makes the show so much more exciting, and we see that later because we're not doing that in the actual voicing. But the singing was a surprise to me when we were at the, uh, at the San Diego Comic-Con. It was wonderful. So, so, so was it the first time when you were at the Comic-Con um, that you had seen the animation for that segment? Yes, Absolutely. It, it, they, they had a surprise, they said, for the fans, and all of us were sitting there watching. So it was a prize for you as no well. we had no idea what was going to come on screen. <laughs> wow. And then I was there, and I got a little choked up because I'm a bit of a, a mush pie, and I have a music background. That's my whole thing is music, my background. And so uh, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I want to get a, an idea of where did Spike originate from in the auditioning process. And, and walk us through, we, we, did you audition for both Spike and Mare Mare, or did you do it sep do a, a just for Spike, and they said, well, we want you to be Mare Mare too? Um, most of us actors, when we have the option to uh, do different characters, we will do that all at once. So what we do is we we get audition sides, they say, and they provide it through our agent. Excuse me, and then we see what we feel that we can do. If you're a veteran actor, you, you often have a chance. Sometimes there's no time. And then we would audition for what we believe we can do within our range. So, yes, I did audition for uh, some of the ponies as well, and, you know, Mayor Mayor and Spike, and luckily I ended up with the two, with those two. 
We, we, we love Spike, obviously, and, and Mare Mare uh, is, is great, too. Now, th- there's not a whole lot of times where Spike and Mare Mare are kind of communicating uh, with each other. Is it, is it a pretty easy transition to, to jump from one into the other? Very much so. At this point, we I've been doing it for so many years that we can do that. So, Mayor Mare's like this, talking like this to all the ponies in Ponyville. And Spike say, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Spike apparently is very politically active. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, with, with the, the dynamic that Spike has with the rest of the the main six as it were it, it's always interesting and we always sometimes feel bad for spike we feel like he gets he he gets knocked away and he, he doesn't get his even in the he photo he doesn't get invited to the party i know he, he's just he's just left on the wayside <laughs> do, do the do the other actors actresses do that in the recording session as well well you know yes and no i mean <laughs> spike, spike uh, you know he sleeps a lot you know he eats a lot of gemstones he's a little boy hopefully we'll see more interaction i hope we do well, great. Maybe we'll have it be the main six and Spike. We'll rename it. Well, I seem to hang around them quite a bit lately, so that's a good thing. <laughs> My Little Pony plus one dragon. I think that's what they should rename the show. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So. Oh, terrific. Well, I think that we've uh, uh, got just a little bit uh, of time here. We're, yeah. uh, we're going to wrap it up here. But is there anything that you want to say to the fans? Just let's talk about the Brony community uh, for a second. What has your, been your reaction to seeing all the the response to Spike and Mare Mare? I mean, there's so many artworks for both Spike and Mare Mare. What has your response been to the community? I think it's fantastic, and I welcome everyone to uh, to to take a look at the show and to continue with the uh, wonderful reactions that we've gotten. The art, the music, the the writing, um, the community, the the cosplay. Uh, it's fantastic, and I I have to say that I think it really is the the heart and the kindness and the whole point behind friendship that's brought people together, including the Bronies and everybody else. And I just say, let's bring it on and grow, grow, grow. Bigger community. Bigger community. (laughs) Great. Well, well, thank you so much for taking the time uh, with us today to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Um, Hope you enjoy your time at the convention. And I believe... Well, and, and is uh, so again. Once and again, we've been talking with Rainbow Dash. Oh, I mean, sp- no, sp- <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but no, but <laughs> they had the the Spike. You got to play Spike. Uh, Spike is best Rainbow Dash. I'm thinking. He's he's best Dragon, but mm-hmm. he's the best guy overall. Good. Yeah. Well, right. well, thank you once again. This is Joe Stevens and Tech Rat with the Equestrian Inquirer and Everfree Radio at Everfree Northwest.